Hey friends, welcome to Hot News. Hope you're having a great, what is it, Friday? Yeah, hope you're having a great Friday. We're gonna get into all of the tech news that we got for you today after I tell you about today's video sponsor, iFixit, my friends. Whether you're looking to repair a phone, to repair a laptop, or to just have some really high quality tools like their ProTect Toolkit, just lying around the office or your, your house to make sure that you can do whatever repair you want, you should check them out at ifixit.com forward slash UFD tech. Because there, not only can you get all of the tools that you need to do any sort of repair, they also sell replacement parts like the display assembly for the MacBook Pro that I broke on Reese's laptop. This is the old one. We've already put the new one in here. Big thanks to iFixit because they sell the parts for it. And then on top of that, they also have handy repair guides so that you're not flying in blind and trying to do something that you're ill-equipped to do because they're there to teach you how. So if you're interested in picking up the tools, picking up parts for replacement, if you broke the screen on your phone, then you can check it out at ifixit.com forward slash UFD tech. Link for that is in the video description. Big thanks to them for sponsoring this video. Okay, so let's dive into the news. The first one being Windows 10 and the perpetually just horrific October update that has been rolled out and constantly causing issues. Back in when it was first trying to come out, it was deleting users' files, and then there are other issues that happen on subsequent rollouts. Well, now the latest update to the October update now bricks game performance with your whatever game you want to play. So right now, the, the main games that they're reporting issues with are Destiny 2, Sea of Thieves. I've heard issues in Overwatch. There's been several issues in a ton of games where it's just dropping frames, adding input lag, kind of ruining the entire gaming experience, and it's on all platforms. So whether you have an Intel or AMD CPU, you have an AMD or Nvidia graphics card, you're kind of getting ruined performance. Even one Reddit post saying that, when I don't move my mouse, the game runs fine. As soon as I move my mouse, it's one second per frame. So that's fantastic. And this isn't just something that people are reporting out on the internet. Microsoft has actually added this as a list of problems to the latest update. So if you're a gamer who plays any game, really, like there's there's been so many different reports that it could be affecting more games just depending on the system. If you're a gamer, please don't update to the latest Windows update right now because you're likely gonna have a bad time, or not even likely, just the possibility of a bad time is not worth it. So you tell Microsoft, no, you're not allowed to update on me. You slap it, you slap that Windows update. Just get rid of it altogether. And you treat it like you would uh, a, a waffle. That's how it waffles. <laughs> they need to respect me. I never get enough respect from waffles, so if you just, it only works on waffles. Though. You don't hit people to get respect, Reese. Just waffles though, okay? They're the only creature ever existing that responds well to physical violence. And then let's talk about AMD because they've confirmed some new news on a bunch of different stuff. Actually, not a bunch, but just uh, they have unveiled the fact that they are indeed going to be launching third generation Threadripper CPUs later this year. They did this at a May um, client update to kind of confirm what lineup they have going on this year, talking about nonstop product momentum. And they unveiled that, yes, third gen Ryzen Threadripper will be coming out probably towards the end of the year. It's not known now. Now, whether or not that's gonna have an increase in cores from 32, like what, 48 and 60, that would be insane on like a high-end desktop platform. Uh, but definitely what we can expect to see is some clock speed increases. 16 cores at five gigahertz on Threadripper because it has the giant die. I mean, the 2950X is at 4.4. So going down to seven nanometers with the architectural improvements of Zen 2, I could see that one being at uh, five gigahertz. Even if it's not on Ryzen 3000 with the 3850X, the Threadripper could probably do it. That's what I'm thinking. And then also in this product momentum, they've confirmed that third gen Ryzen desktop processors, the 3000 series should be coming mid year, which is what a lot of the rumors have been indicating. My speculation that they might potentially be launched yesterday, totally wrong. Uh, so, but that's what happens when you theorize like an idiot. Let's speak of theorizing, maybe like an idiot, maybe not. I don't know what to say here. WCCF Tech has an exclusive leak on the fact that they're saying that the Ryzen 7 3750H mobile processors will be unveiled on April 1st. So that means that it's four cores, eight threads. I believe it has Vega 10 graphics going alongside with it. But the big report here is that with a Ryzen 7 
3750H processor, you add in a, uh, a 1660 Ti on that, and then your laptop's only $1,099, which is pretty cheap for a gaming laptop that can compete with a 1070. So that's, that's pretty cool. But let's talk about that 1660 Ti mobile uh, chip because it hasn't been announced by NVIDIA at all. Just like the RTX 2050 that Dell said was coming to laptops, there hadn't been a desktop or mobile version of that announced. Well, Dell has backtracked saying, no, we didn't mean to say that it was going to be the RTX 2050 in that product lineup. It's actually going to be the 1660 Ti except for that hasn't been announced yet. So they went from reporting one thing that doesn't exist to reporting another thing that doesn't exist. And Dell is just really, I'm sure Nvidia is super happy with them right now. I know that when we didn't talk about them the way that they wanted to, they just stopped answering my emails. So I can't imagine what they're gonna do to Dell. You hear that Nvidia, I'm lonely. Why won't you respond to my calls? Ah, but you know who Nvidia is responding to? themselves. That's a weird segue. Anyways, they just published a report where they did a study where they compared the average KD ratio of somebody using specific versions of graphics cards versus like, like what? Like they, this, the report has a nearly identifiable improvement if you're running a 1080 Ti, no matter how many hours of practice you have, you will be better than if you were on a 1070 Ti. And if you're on a 1070 Ti, you will be better if you had a 1060. And if you have a 1060, you're better than if you had a 1050 and 1050 Ti by a significant amount. They're saying that the improvement from KD ratio from a 1050 Ti to a 1080 Ti on five hours played in a game per week is like 75%. A 75% increase. My goodness, this is basic statistics, Rickus, okay? Correlation does not equal causation. This probably is just data that's reflecting that people who probably have better graphics cards are better at the game. They're more willing to spend a large sum of money on something that they enjoy because they're good at it and they get a lot of return out of that as opposed to somebody who is just doing it casually, is not really intense about it, only has, you know, a 1.3 KD ratio as opposed to a freaking 1.8 because they just play every five hours a week and that's all the money that they want. It's, this is ridiculous, okay? I'm just, this, this, this pisses me off. Just because you have a better graphics card doesn't mean that you're better at Fortnite or PUBG, okay? Because I play on a 2080 Ti, I played with the 1440p 144 hertz G-Sync monitor and you know what? I get stomped on. You know what my KD ratio is? Zero, okay? Because I suck at the freaking game. I probably average one kill every 18 games. I'm that bad, even on the best equipment. This has no, this is not direct causation, NVIDIA. Don't do this. This study sucks. I'm angry at you. Bad NVIDIA. You feel better? Now I do. Because if that story, if that was true, across the average. That means I'm so far below average. And that hurts me because I have the best equipment known to man and I'm trash. Maybe I, maybe I need a 4K 120 Hertz monitor and two 2080 Ti's. That's probably like just one's not enough. That's, that's not enough. Yeah, Reese can have my Founders Edition. I just need to put the 2080 Ti under my pillow and then it's ray tracing horsepower can osmosis to my brain and then I'll be finally good at Fortnite. It's what I've wanted. To die. Yes, just in time for the downfall. I'm finally better because I slept with my graphics cards. Things I say on this show. Anyways, Microsoft has open sourced the calculator app. You're welcome. And then CD Projekt Red has unveiled that Cyberpunk 2077, while it may have been demoed in a pretty significant fashion, the development is far from over. This is coming from a documentary series that PlayStation has done on their YouTube channel, where CD Projekt Red is basically saying, hold your horses, we still got a lot of work to do. So we'll see when we get that. But you know what we did get yesterday from Corsair? They unveiled the K83 wireless keyboard, which looks to be something more akin to controlling media stuff. This is kind of probably gonna replace some of the Logitech stuff that, but if you want a new media keyboard for like home theater PC, Corsair has the option now. But you know what Corsair also has? They have custom water cooling stuff coming out that hasn't fully been announced, but a Swiss retailer has posted pictures and pricing of everything. And it's kind of cool. It's everything that you would expect from Corsair. The water blocks kind of look like the AIO water blocks that they already have. They have RGB stuff, they have all of the fittings, Honestly, it it screams Corsair to me, which is a good thing. This is just in line with their product branding and I kind of like it. You know what I don't like? 
EA. But that's good because they're not gonna have an E3 press conference, just like Sony and other people. Like right now it's Microsoft and that's the only one that matters. I think Activision pulled out, right? I think so. Anyways, E3 is gonna be basically a snooze fest, so haha. -ha. And then, in case you haven't heard about the latest blunder from the President of the United States in a meeting with Apple, he called the CEO of Apple, Tim Cook, Tim Apple. And then Tim Cook changed his Twitter handle to be Tim Apple Emoji, subtweet of the year. <laughs> And then Sony is finally bringing PS4 remote play to the iPhone and iPad, which is ridiculous because it's still not technically available for Android phones that are not made by Sony. So what the frick? This is garbage. I mean, I do have an iPhone, but you know what? I'm okay with anything that allows me to play Persona in a new place. I can't wait until it comes out on the Switch. Because that's how I played the majority of Persona 5 was on my Vita using remote play because it's, it's so much better as a mobile game than it is as a like full console experience. And then in case you want to cripple your computer and uh, smack it down to the Stone Age, Maxon has released their new Cinebench benchmark, the Cinebench R20. So this is replacing the R15, has a new scene, you can run the benchmark. However, they're being a little weird about it because they only want you to download it from the Windows Store, which is complete horse hockey. However, Tech Power Up still has a download up as of the time of recording. So I'd recommend you download it from there as opposed to through Microsoft. Ew. Ew. Ow. And then if you at all care about Battlefield 5 still, and if you at all care about another Battle Royale, intro tutorial video for Firestorm has leaked. They told us it was coming in March. It looks like it's still coming in March. Who needs it now? Especially after Apex Legends. I'm sorry, Battlefield, you're dead. This is like Shadow of the Tomb Raider final, finally adding ray tracing. I, yeah, it should be. They haven't said it's not happening. It's just like, you promised it, but you're irrelevant now. Why? Why have you waited so long to bring us something that's gonna be so disappointing? Anyways, I'm gonna end hot news there. Don't forget to hit the like button if you enjoyed the video. Go check out iFixit's repair guides. Go check out their tools and their replacement parts at ifixit.com forward slash UFD tech. Top link in the video description for that. Get subscribed if you want to stay up to date on all of our tech related content. That's hot news. That's some build projects we're working on. We even have a uh, video where I'm going to tell you everything that we're working on because I bought several thousand dollars worth of equipment that I shouldn't have. Anyways, I feel sad about myself right now. Bye.